So we got to replace the end on this auger. Here's our drawing, existing auger. Cut. And put that new end on there. You can see it's a little bit different. Has a longer end on it. We're going to a spline application instead of a keyway. Solid. Solid for now. Good. Whoop, 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 whoop. Did you find air yet in there? So we're going in so deep because we're going to put a shaft all the way down inside the bore so that we can have something to hold on to after we weld in the shaft and make our new stub shaft. So next step is we make a shaft to fit inside that bore. So we actually cut it off and now we're going to insert the shaft into there and weld it up. And that should get us nicely lined up on this auger to support that. And we can do our finished churning after that. Press it. Nice. Ready for welding. Slammer in, let's go. And that weld doesn't look too bad. What, did you do it three times or what? Did he do it three times? <laughs> no, but he took his time, he did. Some assembly required. is a little bit. That's lots. So did you um, just put the center or put the steady rest on just to uh, machine uh, an edge so you can put your center in? I had my steady there so I didn't get hit in the head with the auger. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a good thing. I, um, 
I had a nut on the end of the center so I could tap just around so I could indicate that being true. Okay. Just with the fork. Yeah. And then I turned a steady spot here to put the steady on and then I was able to center it. What we did now is we had finished the churning. Did you finish churning this or yep. did you? It's all finished. So it's all finished. And then we actually had to take our female spline here and weld it on the end. So our guy Casey made up a aluminum end cap, threaded it, pressed it right on there good and tight, holding it on there. We tack welded it, stuck it back in the lathe, checked it out. It was only running uh, two to three thou out. So we went ahead and welded the, the whole thing up and now we're gonna check it once more. So we're running within a thou there or so, pound and a half. Moment of truth. Wow, nice. Good job, Kaser. I like that. Yeah. Take the end cap off. Take the end cap off. Looking good. Let's see that spline. So again, this is replacing the keyway that was on there before. So now we're going to a spline set up. We've got a male spline cut but our uh, buddy of West there. Metal teeth. I'll be taking him in the video. And we'll need some pliers. Squeaky clean. I like it. And now that we took the end cap off, hopefully, we're still within our thou or two. Wow. Sweet. We can live with that. Nice. So this, so this space is really limited for this drive. There's this line. See if it goes in. Oh, <laughs> it's nice. Probably went a little bit out around. So uh, there's a bearing uh, seat where the steady rest is there or around that area. So there's two bearings in there supporting the uh, auger. So this is a really tight application. So there wasn't a lot of room to have our spline in there. We did, uh, our customer did the best job he could on designing that and fitting it in between the motor and the uh, outside diameter of the shaft here with the bearings. <laughs> didn't need to try to
We got a couple bearing seats, and then we got a seal surface in there. There's our seal surface for our seal and plate there. Let's go up against a tank or something like that. There's our auger. So we're just getting ready to throw our bearings together. Get that all assembled. So this spline nail part here will be shrunk onto the motor shaft. And then of course, because it's uh, food industry, it gets changed in and out all the time. That's why they went with a spline instead of a keyway on there. Almost there, not quite. Moves nice. I need to make sure I'm not happy with honor. 